Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn it to Isaiah chapter 57. This is the continuation of the Isaiah series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's read verse 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. In other words, the good people die, and people just don't think about it. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Now, Isaiah was considered a major prophet. It is probably the most quoted Old Testament book in the New Testament. And it was considered a major prophet because of the size of the book. And it has a great deal of messianic prophecies. But when the wicked killed the righteous in the Old Testament. You could read in the book of Luke, cha um, chapter 16, that Jesus told of the rich man and Lazarus. And people will try to persuade you that, oh, well, this is just a, a parable. It's just a story. But the thing is, Christ called Lazarus by name. And even if it's not a real story, even if it is just a parable, it still has the same type of meaning. In the Old Testament, when a Old Testament believer died, they went to a place called Abraham's bosom, which was uh, a compartment inside of hell but it was not punishment. You see, they didn't get out of there until Christ died. And he said, he, like the in Jonah, he says for three days and three nights he would go into the heart of the earth. Well, what was he doing? He was preaching to the Old Testament saints. And I have a Bible study on that. If you look on the search button on my channel and type in Abraham's bosom, or, you know, rich man Lazarus, you'll find it. I do a detailed study on that. You know, that's what, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, Jesus went to hell for three days. Well, yeah, he did. But he wasn't in the flames. He was in Abraham's bosom. And you can read about that. But what about after his resurrection? Well, he took all the captives and set them free from Satan's prison. They went up to be with Christ in heaven, I guess you could say. Remember the thief on the cross? He said, Lord, remember me this day when you're in paradise. And I'm paraphrasing. You know, uh, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, Thou shalt be with me this day in paradise. Well, after the uh, resurrection, they, uh, they're not there anymore in Lazarus's bosom. So where are they? Well, I believe that Revelation chapter 6 records this quite well. Let's see, verse 9. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Huh. 
So, they're with, I guess you could say they're, they're up in the arms of Jesus waiting for their resurrected bodies. See, they're only souls right now. They don't have their resurrected bodies, and their old physical bodies were killed, right? So, what? verse 11, here's the answer. They asked, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. You see, people, until they get their resurrected bodies and come with Christ in the clouds, in glory, with Christ, um, they're up in heaven. So if anybody tells you, you know, oh, well, you know, the dead, they don't know nothing, soul sleep, well, tell them to read Revelation chapter 6. I think when it says that they don't know nothing, maybe it's they don't know anything about what's going on on the earth. I don't know. All right, so Isaiah 57, verse 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Oh yeah, when God sends his wrath upon the earth, the righteous are spared. And what's sad is the average churchgoer has no idea of the difference between judgment and wrath. Judgment's getting spanked. Wrath is being destroyed physically and spiritually. People just don't get it. And the Bible even declares that judgment begins at the house of God. Yeah, that's getting spanked, people. And uh, I'm an expert on that. Trust me, I'm an expert on judgment and getting spanked. Expert. I've got my doctorate degree in that. My PhD. All right, so, but the righteous are spared. Verse 2. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? What does that mean, drawing out the tongue? I think it means to stick their tongue out. You know, uh, have you ever seen somebody stick their tongue out at somebody? I think that's what it means. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what it means. Verse 5. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Remember they were talking about sorceresses? Yeah, well, that's what they do. They kidnap children and they kill them. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Yeah, it's happening today, people. You know, there's a reason why the Lord said to put Satanists to death. But you listen to the modern church world, ah, we're supposed to love everybody. You want to love Satanists and you want to love their father, Satan? You go for it, dog, but I'm going to pass. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm on uh, the King James Bible online in the comments section, and I've actually had people tell me we're supposed to love these devils that kidnap and sacrifice children on an altar to Satan. Yeah, we're supposed to love them. Uh, what's the chance of them getting saved? Probably a point zero 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 one, or maybe it's a point zero 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 six six six. I don't know. 
Verse, well, now let's read verse 6, Isaiah 57. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They, they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Even thither wentest up to offer sacrifice. Behold, I'm sorry, behind the doors also in the post hast thou set up thy remembrance. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me and art gone up. So they're not going up to the Lord. No, they're going up to the devil. Thou hast enlarged thy bed and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. So basically, they're in bed with the devil. And thou wentest to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. Now, hell's an interesting word. When it comes to the body, the word hell is often translated for grave. And then, when you're talking the soul, well, it's the place of the abode of the souls. Abraham's bosom talked about the flames. And then, there's another word in the Greek where, uh, let's see, you got Gehenna, I think Gehenna, I'm not sure if it was Greek or Hebrew, where it talks about the flames. And then you've got Hades, which is translated as hell. And then you've got the word Tartarus, which is also referenced as hell. And that is the place or the abode of the angels that are in chains of darkness. So, and the Jehovah's Witnesses, they're famous. They'll, they'll take the first meaning for hell, which is where your body's laid in the ground, and they'll say, see, see, that's what hell is. It's the grave. It's where they lay the body. But then they totally ignore everything else. I mean, you know, sometimes words have more than one meaning. I remember a pun when I was very young. And um, words have more than one meaning. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? In case he got a hole in one. You know. Uh, so did he sink the ball the first time he hit it into the hole? Or did he get a hole in his pants? Yeah. I know, it's not a very, it's not a funny joke. But, you know, words have more than multiple meanings sometimes. Uh, but you can't teach church. You know, when people have their faith in a organization and a system and traditions, you can't teach them anything. I mean, it's just almost impossible. And when they disrespect and dishonor the Lord, I honestly believe he, he blinds them. On purpose. I, I honestly believe that. I mean, Mormons just totally dishonor the Lord by calling Jesus the brother of Satan. I mean, really? You want Satan's brother for your Savior? Really? And then you wonder why they can't hear the gospel. Yeah. And then the you-know-whos claim that Jesus performed his miracles by the power of of the devil and you wonder why they can't hear the gospel uh, even if they're not of the serpent seed line Genesis 6 sons of God daughters of men the Giants the Nephilim whatever you want to call them Goliath anyone you know even if they were of the good seed if when they start teaching that Jesus performed his miracles by the power of Satan that's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit 
There is no salvation for them. God blinds their eyes, hardens their heart, and that's it. So, and thou wentest to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou wast not grieved. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared, that thou hast lied, and hast not remembered me, nor laid it to thy heart? That's right, they didn't remember the Lord. Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearest me not? I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they shall not profit thee. Oh yeah, there comes a day when all our works are going to be declared. And uh, oh boy, if the Lord, if the Lord brings up every bad thing that I've ever done, we're going to be there for a, a few, probably a few years, listening. Thirteen. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee. Oh yeah, when you're in trouble, let your your idols and your false gods, let the devil deliver you from your troubles. But the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them. But he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Now, I've covered this a few times. Jesus is called the rock. And he was called a stone of stumbling to those that didn't believe. I mean, they, there are people that would rather keep over 600 and something laws that they don't keep, that they haven't kept, but they're going to try and they're going to go to the Lord and say, oh, well, I I kept uh, 598 of your laws. And the Lord's going to say, well, I think there's 613. What about the other 15 laws you didn't keep? You're a lawbreaker. Away from, away from me. Instead of just believing in the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. I mean, don't you want a, a sinless Lamb as your sacrifice? Or would you rather your sinful flesh and the works of your own hands? A stumbling block, people. They're tripping on the stone and falling down. That's what that means. Take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus saith the high and lofty, one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Verse 16. For I will not contend forever. You see, people, the Lord is not going to contend with us forever. He'll, if you're one of his sheep, he'll give you chances and he'll tug at you. But if you really don't want, at, want him, he'll let you have what you want. If you, When you want the Lord more than anything else in this world, you'll find him. But when you want your sin more than anything else, he'll let you have it. Read Romans 1. Um, for I will not contend forever, neither will I always be wroth. For the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. Now, uh, I made that statement about the Mormons. It's uh, the thing about Jesus and Satan being brothers. That's in their doctrines and covenants. And if you go to one of their uh, temples, you'll see all kinds of satanic symbols on their, uh, 
their their temple. Now, when I was in the late eighties, I was getting into the new age stuff, which was actually very old age. They just call it the new age. Uh, it's mentioned, you know, like UFOs and crystals and that kind of stuff. But it actually sounded pretty good, you know, peace, love, sort of like the old hippie movement of the 60s, which I had kind of hoped for, but didn't pan out. But uh, I used to go to this bookstore, New Age bookstore, and they had a special section for the occult. And I mean the heavy duty stuff. I mean satanic, evil, wicked stuff that even as an unbeliever, I was like appalled. And I went into this tiny little section. It was kind of like in the back, hidden in a corner, and I was browsing through it. And I saw this stuff, and I was like, you know, I, I went to a private Baptist school in um, what grade? I think it was eighth grade. And. Um, you know, I knew something about church stuff. And I saw this and I was like, whoa, what is this that I'm getting into here? You know, well, that's the thing. They they walk you into the baby stuff. And then before you know it, you're graduating, you know, to the evil stuff. And I started looking into some of this stuff. And guess what I found? The highest symbol in the occult was the six pointed star. And if you don't know what that is, take a look at the Israeli flag. Yeah, the dual triangles, one facing up, one facing down, interconnected. I saw that and I was like, whoa. And it wasn't long after that, that um, some wonderful Christians witnessed to me and once I discovered the two keys to understanding the Bible, the Bible was an open book. That's why on my uh, thumbnail picture, I have the Bible with the two keys. One, who is Israel? And two, uh, the two seed lines. Who, well, who is Israel and who is not Israel? When you understand those two things, the Bible makes a lot of sense. But when you take the satanic seed line and you try to make them into being Israel, uh, you know, that was the reason why I fell away from the faith when I was so young. Well, that and I wanted to have fun, you know, drugs and get drunk and chase women around. And I wasn't very successful doing that. But, uh, yeah. So... But once I discovered the two keys, the Bible made so much sense. And that's why I teach all this stuff. So, all right, so, verse 17, Isaiah 57, 17. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth, and smote him. I hid me, and was wroth. And he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips, peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. And people, seek the Lord while he may be found. And, you know, those of you that listen on a regular basis, yeah, that's not a problem. But, um, you know, I look at America, today is June 13, 2020. They're still under this corona garbage thing. But I look at America, 
and I see judgment on the horizon. The church is going to see persecution that they have never seen in this country before. Look up the Noahide laws, people, N-O-A-H-I-D-E, and spend an hour looking at into it. Laws are on the books. You could be put to death for believing in Jesus Christ. These laws are on the books in the United States. You know, here it is. Congress is not, you know, the First Amendment, they're not, uh, was it? No. What, I forget what amendment it is, but they're not supposed to make an established religion. And yet they have. And it's not Christianity. But you know what? Persecution is going to bring revival. Not a great revival, but a revival of the remnant. But you know what? All these people that teach the pre-trib rapture as a fact, every single one of them are going to be proven to be false prophets. And God has a solution for false prophets. It's one thing I liked about Kent Hoven, um, especially his stuff that he did before he went to prison for almost 10 years. He was starting to preach on um, the evil one world government coming. And they locked, had him locked up for, I think, like nine and a half years. But uh, in prison... He started reading the Bible, well, not starting, but, you know, he was reading the Bible, and he's like, he figured out there is no rapture before the tribulation. There is, it's not there. You, they can't, they cannot show you not one clear verse. They can't do it. It's not there. But, you know what? These people, they bless They've been taught to bless the Antichrist, the people that hate and curse Jesus. You think, what do you think God's the Father is going to do to people that curse his son and those that bless them? You know, in 2 John chapter 1 and verse 10. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, what doctrine? The doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Godspeed, what is that? That's basically saying, God bless you. And what are churches doing? They're bringing Antichrist rabbis into the churches, so called. To teach. What are they teaching? Not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, unbelievable. You're not even supposed to, you know, if the Jehovah's Witnesses knock on my door, I'll go outside and talk to them. I won't bring them inside. My uh, family liked a pair of uh, lesbians. And uh, I don't br invite them over anymore. You bring curses into your house. And I'm still working on taking care of this sin. But, you know, you're not supposed to bring them into your house. They bring curses into your house. You know, it's just... So what you're going to say, if they don't have the doctrine of Christ, you're going you're gonna to say, God bless you to unbelieving rabbis that curse Jesus? Really? And then you wonder why bad things happen? God brings, instead of blessings in your life, you get curses? Let me tell you something, people. All these Zionists that claim to be Christians, the, you know, God blinds them with the pre trib rapture. What's going to happen to their faith when they find out that they have to die for Jesus? I had one, I warned him, I says, don't you ever deny Jesus, because if you deny Jesus, Jesus said he would deny you before God the Father and his angels. You know what he told me? Oh, well, I'm, I'm eternally secure. Really? 
You're eternally secure? The Bible teaches that your name could be blotted out of the book of life. Jesus said that we had to endure unto the end. What does that mean, you're eternally secure? I mean, really? Trust me, people, this is going to be a bumpy road. So, but you know what? Persecution, people. I'm actually looking forward to all these churchgoers that bless these antichrists. I'm actually looking forward to them getting their either denying Jesus or getting their heads cut off by the very ones that they blessed. So, because you know what? Persecution will wake up the church. Persecution will bring revival. It'll probably only be a remnant, but it's going to be a strong revival. People are going to be performing miracles. In Daniel 11.32, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. I think that means miracles. Jesus took the disciples and sent them out by twos and twos. And they did they healed the sick. They cast out devils. Now, obviously, we're not the disciples, but Mark 6, verse 7. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. You know, in Mark 13, verse 4. The disciples said, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? In other words, tell us about the end times. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Yeah, pay attention. Don't let anybody deceive you. There is so much deception today. Uh, churches, horrible. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when, sh when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. Guess what, people? There's been so many earthquakes lately. And there shall be famines. Bingo. I guess we ought to put some food away. And troubles. Uh, riots. Anyone? These are the beginnings of sorrows. This is only the introduction, people. Verse 9. Noahide laws. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues. Ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. You know, you go to one of these mega churches, especially those that preach the... Uh, well, you know, you got to speak your faith. God wants to make you rich. You know, how many of those people would uh, go to the go go into the synagogue and be beaten or deny Christ? Think about that. I don't. I don't think there'd be. You go to a mega church of five thousand people. I I doubt if there'd be fifty of them that would do this for Christ. I. I doubt it. For they shall deliver you up to councils and in synagogues. Ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among nations, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Don't think about what you're going to say. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. That only happened to me one time. Somebody asked me a question when I was a brand new baby in the faith and knew almost nothing. And I was witnessing to somebody very young. And they asked me a question. 
And I opened my mouth to say, I don't know, because I didn't know. But something else came out of my mouth. And I was like, whoa, dude, what was that? Of course, I knew what it was. And then about a week or two later, I found exactly what I had said in the scriptures. So, the Holy Ghost spoke through me one time. And guess what, people? That's what's going to happen when they bring you before councils to be put to death. That is going to be your proof of your salvation. Dying for the faith, speaking via the Holy Ghost. Verse 12, Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And what name is that? Jesus. But he that shall endure unto the end. Now this is not Bob speaking. This is words of Christ in red. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You got to endure to the end, people. Got to endure to the end. In Matthew 10, 33, Jesus says, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. People, it's going to be rough. Lean on Christ. That is the only thing we're going to have in this world. And uh, sometimes I'm a hypocrite and don't take my own advice. You know, may the Lord grant all of us strength for what is coming. Uh, it's going to be rough, people. And things are just getting started. You know, my lifetime, when they took prayer out of the schools in 1964, I think it was, when I was in probably elementary school, like maybe first grade, second grade, whatever it was, I don't remember exactly. I think I was in second or third grade. I don't remember, but... You know, years later, they made abortion legal. And then it just went downhill from there. Now you've got chaplains in the army, in the military, for the Church of Satan. Can you imagine that? Church of Satan chaplains in the military. What is their gospel? Oh, just be yourself. How would you like to be damned for all eternity? Come pray with us to our Father below. Is that their gospel? Just be yourself? I don't know. It's just unbelievable, people. There is no wickedness that's too evil for the United States and Europe nowadays. Just unbelievable. Please keep me in your prayers, people. I've been trying to wake up the sheep, and sometimes I get really discouraged. It's, you know, I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate those of you that give me some encouragement. Uh, you know, sometimes I think I'm doing this, and it's just a waste of my time. But uh, what can I say? All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Him and Him alone. In Jesus' name, amen.